Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, out on another walk. And this time, I'm in West Sussex, and close to Chichester, and very close to Goodwood. And there, a little tractor, or a largest tractor, trundling along. And actually, trundling is a clue to where I'm going today. I'm going up to the Trundle, an Iron Age hill fort above Goodwood, above Chichester, here on the glorious South Downs. So let's crack on, shall we? Oh, there's, the, there's the public footpath. I've not done this myself um, before, coming up to the Trundle, so this is a first for me, as it may be for some of you. But uh, perhaps many of you are very familiar with this, this hill that I'm climbing now on this uh, very cold, it has to be said, December day. It was um, minus one degrees centigrade as I came out um, of my car. Let's open up the open up the gate and there we go. Let's climb up the hill. This is Saint Rock's Hill. Uh, or it could be pronounced Saint Roche, R-O-C-H. It's actually named after Saint Roche, Roche a, a French Catholic, um, who is supposedly the patron saint of dogs, as well as the patron saint of those unjustly accused. I believe also Saint Roche has something to do with the controlling of the weather. The reason the hill is called Saint Rock in English or Saint Roche in French, and my French pronunciation is never good, uh, is because there was a chapel at the top of this hill within the Iron Age hill fort, and it got its name because the chapel was dedicated to Saint Roche. I have to say, the views behind me are just staggering. Just absolutely staggering and well worth it. There's a sprinkling of snow. Up here. It's the first snow that I've seen this year, although other parts of the country are currently snowed in, particularly the Midlands as I film this. But uh, magnificent, <laughs> just magnificent. Now on the top of the hill you can see uh, radio masts. During the Second World War there were radar stations here, part of the home chain low, part of Britain's defence against the German Luftwaffe. The, uh, the fighters and bombers, more particularly, able to detect them as they came in trying to bomb us during the Battle of Britain and the Blitz. But that's, that's all gone now. So it looks like I'm coming up to the Iron Age hill fort's entrance on the northeast side. So very reminiscent of Sisbury Ring which is close to where I live. In the distance I can hear shooting going on. So we're just coming through here, crunching underfoot on the snow, which gives it a very atmospheric effect. Now, if I climb up onto one of the, the ramparts here, we should see a better view because if you are interested in the races, horse racing, at Goodwood you could definitely come up here and uh, you get a, a splendid vantage of everything that's going on and of course it's free. You, uh, you probably just need to get a car parking space somewhere. No doubt the little car park there would be um, full. So what can I tell you about the uh, the Iron Age hill fort? Well, um, 
The hill is obviously um, very ancient, goes back to the times when the Downs was created, of course, but in the Neolithic period, um, there was a, a Neolithic causeway enclosure, they call it, which was basically earthworks, like this rampart that I'm standing on now, um, concentric circles. So I think we're talking about 3000 uh, BC, something like that. Um, concentric circles, a number of, of earthworks. Now, quite what they were for is anybody's guess. And of course, when archaeologists or historians don't really know anything um, of that sort of thing, they just say, well, it was a ritual. It was for ritual purposes. And possibly it was. We, we don't really know. As I come around looking south, uh, Chichester Cathedral is just poking up above the mist, uh, which is, I have to say, absolutely stunning. And this is one of the wonderful things about uh, England, uh, Britain, of course, the seasons. You can come out at different times of the year and just get completely different effects. On my left, you can see the transmitters and uh, the trig point. Of course, not only um, was there the Neolithic enclosure and then the Iron Age hill fort, of course, during the Iron Age, at the end of the Iron Age, you had the, the Romans coming in and the archaeologists have done some digging here and they found at least 15 square platforms, which suggests that they were Roman bases for some sort of buildings, some square sort of buildings, no doubt, um, uh, as opposed to the, the, uh, the Iron Age people um, who had, of course, more circular buildings, the roundhouses. Let's, um, let's go up to the, the trig points here, what we can see there. I just have to run down this, this section here and I'm going to be met by a great big bounding dog. <laughs> As I make my way up to the trig point, another interesting um, thing that took place here. This uh, was a meeting, a head, I don't know if it's headquarters, but it was certainly a meeting place for the club men. Now the club men were a bunch of disgruntled vigilantes, effectively, um, which during the English Civil War were neither royalist or parliamentarian. They may have had slight leanings in that way, but what they mostly objected to was the army. And I mean the army on both sides of the, the coin, because you've got to remember there were these huge, um, bodies of men marching at the behest of their leaders. You had the Oliver Cromwell gang and you had the Charles I gang um, moving around and they would go from town to town to village to village billeting their men and as a result of that the poor villagers, the poor, ta poor townspeople had to put up with these tired, hungry, sexually starved men who wanted to rampage uh, through the, the village and take the food, take any money, and also take liberties with the men's, the villagers' women. So the club men began. Now, before we get onto the club men, look at this little, <laughs> a little snowman there on the top of that, and this ice, Oh golly, that is, that is pretty solid. Let's just, before I go onto the clubman over here, if I wander around here, looks like there possibly was a burial mound and it looks like the 18th or 19th century um, grave diggers have been here trying to look to see if they could find anything. So the clubmen were a bunch of people who didn't like the armies taking these liberties. And so they got together, armed with, as it says on the tin, clubs. 
some sort of cudgel and scythes and all sorts of bits of uh, farm equipment tied onto the end of poles. They weren't armed with muskets or cannon, but they were armed with enough to cause enough of a nuisance of themselves. And they had a headquarters here so that they would, they would really just defend their town and villages and say, hey, we're not having this. We're not putting up with you coming in and taking all this stuff. It's gonna take a, a final look on the south side here or south west side. Let's climb up here with these uh, just astounding views. Absolutely astounding. A hill like this, of course, was um, used uh, during times of war and we, we had a very interesting relationship with France um, and because you can you can't today but you could see the channel it was a great lookout place and so acted as a beacon if the French were coming the threat of invasion they could people the villagers could light fires and warn people so if you saw the on the a fire on the top of a hilltop what better way uh, than to know that there was some sort of invasion going and and I believe in 1745 the beacon was lit but I believe mistakenly and it caused all the villages around a lot of trouble and worry so anyway I hope you've enjoyed my little walk uh, around up here certainly worth coming out just for the views again trying to do my best and get out as often as I can in sometimes it's fantastic weather and sometimes rotten. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.